Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Akil and it's that time of year guys to give you guys my list of my top 10 personal favourite movies I saw this year. This time we're talking about my top 10 favourite movies in 2023 guys. Yes, we've made it to the end of another year guys. I've been doing this for a few years now, 5-6 years now. And even though my channel hasn't grown a lot in these past few years, I'm still doing it. I'm still not giving up. I'll probably only stop in maybe... 2028 or 2027 yeah that's the goal because i can't keep doing this forever i know some people like doing this for a long time but after a while you have to ask yourself like is it really worth it is it really getting you anywhere so that's that but anyway um i'm just gonna do this for another couple years and i'll probably stop so if you want you you can stay with me if you don't want it's it's totally fine i'm not forcing you but i would love it if you just spread the word out so that my channel can grow and hopefully hit 100 because i have not hit 100 in the past five years which is crazy so clearly i'm doing something wrong but i'm still putting the effort in i think it's because i don't show my face and stuff like that maybe that's why but overall i'm still confident in what i'm doing so there's that anyway i should say this year there was some very disappointing movies but i saw only 25 movies this year i Still haven't seen Monkey King. I didn't get the chance to see Aquaman or Napoleon. Ferrari hasn't come out for us yet, so there's that. But I saw everything else I wanted to, so there's that. Now, out of the 25 movies I've seen this year, only 11 of those I love. So from 11 to 1 on my ranking on Weatherbox for every movie I've seen this year, 11 of those movies I'll give like an 8 or 9 out of 10. So there's that. And speaking of the 11th film we're gonna jump right into this list and give you my honorable mention for the uh the film that almost made the list and that honorable mention is Nomona. so this is the 11th film of that ranking guys and i love Nomona. i thought it was great it was a great animated film the animation was spectacular the story was pretty damn good too and it was nice seeing a different type of fantasy animated movie guys so that's that all right now we're going to jump right into the top 10 list and again this is my own personal opinion and this list is mostly it's pretty much all blockbusters because unfortunately the prestige movies i missed or didn't really interest me there is only one genuine prestige movie on this list and i think you know what that is but anyway we're just going to jump right into this list guys and starting off with a number 10 we have john wick chapter 4 a movie that i was really not that excited for i didn't really know if I wanted to watch it just yet because I've not seen the third one. I still haven't seen the third one. I don't know why I've not seen it. I've seen the first two and I like those, but I don't love those movies like everyone else does. But John Wick 4 was great and the stunt work was great. There was some great action. It was a long movie, but Keanu Reeves was such a badass in it. And yeah, it was just a great uh, time in the movies. I saw it with my dad and I feel like me and my dad like these type of fun crazy action movie so there we go all right now number nine i also saw this with my dad and the family friend but number nine is the flash and for me personally i love this movie because as a dc fan it gave me what i wanted as a superhero fan it gave me what i wanted and maybe as a batman fan it gave me what i wanted but specifically a flash fan because i used to really like watching that show back in like 2015 16 yeah those years but anyway i thought Ezra Miller did a pretty damn good job in this movie and you can say what you will about them but overall honestly the flash movie did what it had to and i thought andy Muschietti did a great job telling the story and yes the cgi can be a little bit wonky at times but in all honesty i had a lot of fun with this movie guys i really really did all right, number eight is going to be Scream 6. And Scream 6 continues to show why this franchise is not stopping. Oh, yeah, if you can hear some screaming, yelling in the background, it's, I know, some kids going crazy outside. But anyway, Scream 6 was awesome. Is it my favorite Scream film? No. Did I like it more than Scream that came out last year in 2022? No. For me, if I were to rank all six Scream films from worst to best, it'll be three then four then this one right here six then last year's scream or basically scream five 
than the original Scream and then Scream 2. Scream 2 is still my favorite. I know it's a weird one to say, but uh, to choose. But honestly, as a sequel, it just works so well. But anyway, Scream 6 is great. I love it. And I'm very curious how Scream 7 is going to turn out. And I just hope that it's good. I hope it's really good. If it's bad, that'll be sad because... For me, that's never been a bad Scream movie, in my opinion. Like, the b bottom two Scream movies, like Scream 3 and 4, are good. They're not great. They're just good. But that's still not even, like, a 6 out of 10 for me. So, that's that. But I love Scream 6, personally. All right. Number 7 is going to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. A phenomenal animated movie that came out this year that blew me and everyone away, I'm sure. Yes. Wow. What a big surprise this was. My goodness. Paramount. You won me over, guys. You really won me back because Wonder Park sucked so much ass. I hated that movie when it came out in 2019. And wow, you really redeemed yourself with this one, guys. Yes. Now, I really hope Transformers 1 is this level of quality because if it isn't, I don't know what to say because you have the voice cast and you have the story already built, I would say. And apparently they are planning to do free Transformers animated movies with those actors so we'll see how it goes but I want to see how the animation looks like that's the one thing I'm genuinely curious about that movie but this one the Spider-Verse effect is real just like Nimona I would say in some ways and man animation for the first half of the year uh, minus I guess an elemental Ruby Gilman and Wish but Wish came at the end of the year like the second half but point is is that there were some really big animated movies that were either doing well commercially or critically. So there you go. And Ninja Turtles is one of those films. And I feel like this is the next Spider-Verse because it's action packed. It's got beloved iconic characters. It's putting them in a new light. And I love that. Yes. And also Ice Cube at Superfly generally works really well. And I was surprised by that. All right. Number six is going to be 65. Every year that I've been doing this on YouTube, there's been that one movie people generally hate. In 2018, it was Mortal Engines. 2019, there was a few, but Lion King 2019 was probably the biggest one, the Lion King film that came out that year. 2020 was definitely Wonder Woman 1984 and Mulan, but Wonder Woman 1984, I think people dislike more. So there's that 2021, it was Mortal Kombat. Last year was Beast. This year, it's 65. Every year, there's that one movie. I'm just like, I'm I'm not on the same page with. But that's okay. That's the point of these lists, guys, right? It's showing everyone's different opinion. Everyone's got different tastes. And I love this movie. It was short. It was perfectly paced. Even though there was some pacing issues still. But regardless, 65 was great. I loved it. I had a great time at the theater when I saw it back in March by myself. And Adam Driver was great in this movie. And uh, Aaron and Greenbolt was also great, but Adam Driver really stole the show in this movie. Yeah, I think people were expecting like the next Jurassic Park or like, Jurassic Park 10. Don't go in expecting the next Jurassic Park, please. If you walk into this movie expecting that, you're going to be disappointed. For me, it was a short, fast-paced sci-fi action film, and I really loved it. All right, now getting into top five. Number five is Missing, the most underrated movie I've seen this entire year. I loved it. Missing was so much better than I thought it was going to be. And I saw this in theaters. It was great. Storm Reed has come such a long way from a wrinkle in time back in 2018. And my God, that movie was so mid from what I remember. But this, wow, she is great in it. And I love this more than Searching. Searching was great, but this is something else. Yeah, I loved it. Hats off to the people who wrote and directed this movie, guys. And I feel like this is a very unique franchise. And yes, to me, this is a franchise because... This movie references the events of the first movie as well. They even show the events of what happens in that movie too. And nice to see some familiar actors I've seen in like TV shows and stuff. Yeah, Storm Reach so good in this movie. She's great in Euphoria and she's also great in this movie. Yeah, that's all I'll say about Missing. She's, it's, it's really well done and really inspires me to uh, make movies of my own because it shows that you can make movies in any way possible. Like after watching Searching, and so like a year or two or maybe three years ago, I come when I first saw it, I was like, yes. Now it's possible to make a movie in any way that I want. All right. Number four is going to be Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. This was the great MC movie of the year. This was the legitimate only great MC movie of the year, which is sad because, you know, 2021, 
I loved all the MCU movies that came out that year. Black Widow, Eternals, Spider-Man No Way Home, and Shang-Chi. Last year, I loved Wakanda Feather. I liked Multiverse of Madness. And I thought Thor Love and Thunder was mid. This year, it's the same thing. I loved Guardians of Galaxy Volume 3. I liked M and the Wasp Quantumania. And I thought the Marvels was mid. Yes. I don't know what's happening, guys, with the MCU. It's really going in a very strange direction. But at least we got one banger MCU movie this year. And I personally love Secret Invasion. I don't care what you have to say. But Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 gave me what I wanted. It was a great way to end off this really unique trilogy. A trilogy that I don't know if I really love. Because the second film is the weakest. I think many people can agree on that. I don't know. But for me, first... The first one was great, second one's good, but this is easily the best film. And Adam Walk definitely could have been better, and this movie definitely could have been a little bit shorter, but overall, James Gunn promised, and he delivered. Yes, I love this movie, and I love these characters, and yes, it's going to be sad seeing the Guardians with a new director, because James Gunn's over at DC, but I cannot wait for Superman Legacy. I really have high hopes for that movie. Not only do I think it will be the best Superman movie ever made, but it will also be one of the best superhero slash comic book movies of this century slash, slash generation, guys. Yes, that's how I feel about Superman Legacy. Because we still have a lot of other big super movies coming up. Like next year, for example, we got Deadpool 3. Who knows how that's going to turn out, guys, right? But anyway... Loved Guardian 3. It was a great way to say goodbye to these characters in the MCU. Alright. Well, not really goodbye because they're still they're still they're still alive, guys. They're still alive, but like this this trilogy, this era of Guardians movies, I would say. Yeah. Alright. Number three is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Wow. The final hour of this movie, my heart was pounding and racing. Like the last time I think I had that was probably with Avengers Infinity War, I think. Like, it was, like, so intense. Such a roller coaster ride. And for an animated movie to do this, it's crazy. Miles Morales is such a great character. Gwen, such a great character. Peter, such a great character. Miguel, oh my god. Oscar Isaac, so good, man. So, so good. And the way they set up the third film... I'm so ready. I'm so ready. I don't know when it's coming out, but still, let them take all the time they want because Beyond the Spider-Verse is probably going to be one of the best endings to any trilogy ever. And this will be one of the greatest trilogies we have of all time and possibly the greatest animated trilogy. I already think it is already with just two movies because both of them are given 9 out of 10. In fact, from 7, which is TMNT Mutant Mayhem, all the way to 1, all of these movies I've given 9 out of 10 to, guys. So there's that. But anyway, Spider-Verse, so good. The best animated movie, the best super movie I've seen this year, <laughs> without a doubt. In a year where super movies could have been so much better than they were. But hey, I love Guardians 3, so there we go. Alright, number 2 is going to be my most anticipated, was my most anticipated movie of the year. And I'm so happy it's... My second favorite movie of the year, and that's Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer was special. This is a special type of movie that we don't really get nowadays, where it has a giant cast, a re world-renowned great director, tackling a very big, ambitious, ballsy subject matter, if I do say so myself. Because it kind of is. It's very hard to really recreate what went on with the creation of the atomic bomb. But no one went for it. He went with the practical route. He shot with IMAX cameras. Drew this Napsu legend. There's a reason why he's still my favorite director. Cillian Murphy killed it. Robert Dan Jr. My God, so good in this movie. And it's one of those movies that you have to pay attention to everything that's going on. Because if you like doze off or fall asleep, you really will not understand what's going on. It's a very talky talky movie. It's not going to be for everyone. But... I loved it. There are some pacing issues, but this movie was so, so good. And I, I'm so happy I saw this in the theater and not at home because I don't think I would have had the same feeling that I did. And I saw it with a bunch of people like my friend and his friends. And now I know them. So there we go. I loved Oppenheimer. It was a great experience. But 
not as good of a time in the movies as number one because number one for me my favorite movie of the year is why i love going to the movies and even though i saw this on my birthday it may be a biased reason for me putting it number one i still love this movie so much and i cannot wait for the eventual end of this franchise in 2025 and number one is mission impossible dead reckoning part one this movie delivered this movie is the only movie that came out this year that's on my top 50 guys yes i loved it now last year the batman was on my top 50 but i've seen a little more movies now for that to change but this movie is my favorite mission possible film one of my favorite tom cruise movies and one of my favorite action movies of all time my goodness dead reckoning part one phenomenal absolutely phenomenal and it's really it's really relevant guys because of what it talks about ai and stuff and some people may say this movie is very very ludicrous and cartoonish because <laughs> as it goes tom cruise battles an ai yeah it's i know it may sound silly but it works really really well and tom cruise kills it Haley atwell kills it the whole cast kills it this is why I love going to the movies, to experience movies like this. I've never seen any of these movies also in the theater because when Thor came out back in 2018, I didn't really care much about action movies. And now I'm sort of getting into them and I've seen a ton on the big franchises. But this is my favorite action franchise. Ethan Hunt is probably my favorite action hero. Tom Cruise is my favorite action hero as well, if that kind of makes sense. Right? Character-wise, it's Ethan Hunt. Actor-wise, it's Tom Cruise without that for sure. I love Matt Damon as Jason Bourne. But, man, Tom Cruise is something else in these movies. Yes. Anyway, Dead Ranking Part 1 is my favorite movie of the year. There's nothing else I can say about it. So, so good. Guys, that's it. That is my top 10 favorite movies of 2023, guys. Yes, what a very interesting and unique year. For me, it's a very unique year. Uh, unique here not just for movies but for my own personal life in general next year we'll see how it goes and next year's for my most anticipated movie list, i'm not gonna do it because i've only got 15 movies on my 2024 movies watch list listed guys so instead of doing a top 10 list because there's only 15 and some of those half those movies i'm not even so excited for i'm gonna be ranking my excitement from least excited to most excited so yeah some of those most anticipated movies that would be on my top 10 or top 5 which would would be obviously much higher but i want to change it up because just because next year is very different because there's a really only 15 movies coming out next year that i generally have any interest in and there's there are some movies coming next year that i might watch but i don't know a much about them just yet or i haven't seen a trailer for yet or i'm very 50 50 on or well, transformers one is one of them i need to see how the animation looks like guys so there's that but guys that's it that's all i have to say i hope you guys have a great new year's eve and new year celebration with your friends and family thank you guys so much for watching everything i've seen all my reviews and everything that came out this year i know the content was all over the place for anime and stuff but and even for my graphic novel collection. But I still feel like I was putting in all the effort I could for my movie reviews and classic reviews. Even though there wasn't barely any of that this year. But guys, thank you so much for watching everything that came out this year on my channel. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. My name is Akil. I always known as the comic director. And I'm signing out.